Well, you know, uh, the main thing I told our guys, uh, you know, it was the Monday night football team, but this was still practice 13. I really wanted to see a continuation of what I've seen here really in the last, I would say, you know, 10 to 12 days, just the way these guys have going about their business, um, you know, uh, a little bit of adverse weather out there tonight, which I think our guys embraced uh, offensively. I like the fact that, you know, I wrote some things down before the game. What would I like to see today? And I would take care of the football, make good decisions, have good ball security. I really want to see how we caught it uh, in the, in these windy conditions with the, with the ball and also just the, just a little brisk temperature out there. Um, thought those things that were accomplished played relatively penalty free. Uh, really on both sides, had a couple of DPIs. Defensively, I wanted to see how we tackled, uh, especially in open space, and we had some opportunities to do that. Uh, we were really thin at safety. Had a couple guys uh, get eliminated today uh, just prior to the game. Um, so there was some uh, uh, concerns just of depth of safety, but I thought the guys that played did well. Defensively, we, um, you know, managed the game, um, talked about certain scenarios. We talked about situational football. I heard all of our defensive guys talking about that. Um, so – a lot of positive. I thought our kicking game, you know, James McCourt uh, you know, really just missed the two longer field goals, but uh, he's been solid for us all spring. And, and Caleb Griffin as well, double dipping at wide receiver and kicker has been great all spring. So overall, we got out of this healthy and, and uh, uh, got two more good practices in front of us this week. I couldn't be ple more pleased. With that, open up for questions. Go ahead, Jeremy. Oh, sorry. I thought Bob had it. Um, Brett, what have you seen from uh, Brandon Peters? Uh, obviously, tonight seemed to, to play pretty well, but is this what you've seen all spring, or, or what did you see from him tonight? Yeah, Jeremy, I, I think, you know, BP's got exceptional arm talent. Um, he's a very, very accurate guy with the ball. Um, he's been able to show that repeatedly now through 13 practices. Um, you know, there's definitely parts of the game where you just got to keep pushing at him, um, you know, and, and, and – but – Tonight, I thought he took care of the ball, had good ball placement. Uh, I thought our tight ends caught the ball really well. Luke uh, Ford has continued to be impressive, uh, uh, and DJ during the course of the last uh, a couple of weeks as well. I thought our wide receivers, Donnie Navarro, is truly going to be a, a pretty good player uh, and has excelled really well in the system. But uh, Kamara Thompson, you saw a couple of guys make some some big time catches, so that was positive. Um, and, and I think BP is learning how to manage the game a little bit more effectively. Uh, now in, in our, our – than he was in, in week one. And, and we saw Luke Ford get targeted a lot. It's more we've seen him catch the ball since he's been here. Uh, how has he progressed this spring, and, and what does he add to your offense? You know, I, I appreciate Luke's effort. Um, I think he's uh, – uh, you know, just in this short time I've been around him, I've really seen his maturity level, um, just in everything that he's doing, just taking a, a big step forward. I um, uh, really like his demeanor, his work ethic. He's still going to have the big personality. and and do certain things, but I think he's concentrating on, on what's important now, which is he's taking care of his uh, uh, academic world and, and concentrating on being a good football player. And what that means is, you know, you show up every day, you do your diligent work, you put in the time and you get rewarded for it. So he's, he's really bought in. Thanks, Brent. Yeah. Go ahead, Robert. Oh, me here, Robert. Bob, go ahead. Go ahead, Bob. Sorry. Sorry. Coach, uh, would you like to name a starting quarterback now, or you want to wait for the fall or later? You know, I, I would. I, we're not really making any decisions. We're not done spring ball yet, but you know, obviously, uh, uh, Brandon has uh, continued to be impressive. He's been a pretty consistent uh, guy. He had a little little dip in week two, uh, one scrimmage where we didn't carry the ball the way we wanted, but I think he really took some coaching. I think him and Tony uh, have been able to communicate very, very well. Isaiah. I was very pleased with what he did when he came in, especially when he got behind that orange all line and, and do what he did. So um, we'll just continue to uh, do what we've been doing. And, and after we get done with 15 practices, we'll take a deep breath, see where we're at. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Okay, we'll go to Robert Rosenthal. And then there's an iPhone. I don't know who's up there with their hand raised up, turn your camera on. But go ahead, Robert. Yeah, Coach, with a game like this, is, is this what you want to see where the first string kind of dominates the second string on both sides? Or would you prefer to see, you know, your, your second string guys making a few more plays? You know, uh, I, I appreciate the question, Robert. Like, I, I just felt our ones, you know, being a new staff, we needed to be uh, in a, 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 around and play next to each other. I wanted the right guard and right tackle to play next to each other. I wanted the center and the quarterback to play together. I wanted the running backs to kind of have a committee. We had really kind of just a number of tight ends and wide receivers set to rotate through there. But um, I like really how the guys efficiently operated on, on the orange unit. 
Um, but I do think we rolled some guys in there in the second half that also showed the ability to maybe have some depth. Um, but uh, again, I thought the whole group overall, even though the twos weren't necessarily point productive, there were some flashes of some things, but they were, yeah, they were going against our better unit. So uh, you have to take everything kind of in perspective. And then can you mention, uh, I guess you talked about it this uh, open, but two guys who haven't played much and Carlos Sandy and Kamari Thompson both had pretty good games tonight. Can you, can you talk about them? Yeah, I think Carlos has been a guy that's really jumped out to me here uh, as of late. I would say the last two weeks for him have been very productive. Uh, um, you know, George McDonald is a, 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 a very uh, aggressive coach, gets, gets a lot out of his guys. And, and Carlos has, has been very, very, um, uh, um, he's grown every practice. Uh, Gio's really done a nice job of bringing him along. And I think he's responded very, very well. And, uh, Kamari, you know, other than putting the ball on the ground, I believe that was him in the fourth quarter there. But, you know, he's a guy that, again, has been very uh, uh, diligent about his work. A lot of times when I'm leaving at night, uh, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, he's still here in the building trying to watch film and get better uh, with Coach McDonald. So I, I really think he's seeing the benefits of putting in hard work and the re rewards coming out of it. All right, Joey, you're up. Colin, on deck. Hey, Brett, for a lot of these fans that have been since November 30th, 2019, since they've been in here, what, what did it feel like to have them in here? How, how did you guys kind of feed off of that? Yeah, it was it was neat to, you know, obviously to hear new voices in the stands and and uh, um, see the group out there. You know, I obviously uh, well, I've only been in the stadium as a, as a visitor. I've never been in as a home team coach. So uh, it was a great reaction from the crowd and hopefully a great indicator of, uh, of how much more we can grow and I know we're, I think this is the last week of season ticket renewal. So we're putting a big push out there that those that haven't got them to get them in now um, and, and, and be ready to support on the fall. I think you're going to have an exciting football team. I think you got a group of guys that are going to represent, you know, the, the people of Illinois in the right way and, and a team that'll make you proud. And in the trenches on both sides, what did you see from your ones today, offensively and defensively? I thought the run game on the offensive side, for sure, we were getting some good move line scrimmage. Uh, uh, doing some things at the point of attack that created some holes. I thought our running backs were able to read off their first read and get to the next level a couple times. Uh, I thought on the defensive line, really, it was tough or anything to get going. I, I think when you have Owen Carney and, and Isaiah Gay on the edges there and some big bodies inside, it's going to be tough to, uh, you know, um, uh, move the ball, hopefully, against us. But uh, uh, I thought overall, I thought both sides of the ball, uh, the line kind of set the tempo for the game. Thanks, Brett. Yes. Okay, Colin, you're up. Hey, Brett, uh, you actually just mentioned what I was going to ask you about with Isaiah Gay as well as Owen, but Isaiah, it seems like his name was being called just all night and really harassing uh, Isaiah Williams. What can you say about Isaiah Gay's play out there tonight? You know, Isaiah has been an intriguing guy, you know, since we arrived here, obviously a, uh, a guy that's kind of put together the right way, just a very impressive athlete, um, but he's a really good competitor, high motor, every practice. He's probably one of the guys that brings juice every day. Um, you know, literally tonight he had class. Um, he, I think he was dressed and ready, ankles taped in the in the Zoom with his class. And then as soon as that done, he bolted out here. We had two guys with the with, with the class conflicts, and he was one of them that I know he was itching to get out here. And once he showed up, it uh, definitely picked up the intensity. And uh, it seemed like you obviously uh, obviously with BTM being out here, you you want to play to that uh, the decision to have the the sideline reporter throw the two point conversion. Take me through uh, that moment. Yeah, at least, uh, you know, really just kind of try to uh, do anything to have some fun. Um, you know, I think anytime you get in tight with a Big Ten network, it's a good thing. And she, uh, uh, we, I looked up her background and she uh, uh, played college softball at Cornell. So um, got the 44 number and and uh, she uh, threw a spot tight. To, I don't know how it was a tight spiral, but it was a spiral. And DJ did a good job of hauling it in, just kind of trying to have a little fun with the guys as well. Thanks, Brett. All right, Gavin, you're up, and then we'll go to the hand raise. So go ahead, Gavin. Hey, Brett, Chase Hayden had a really nice touchdown run. Um, this is someone I haven't been able to see a lot of him. Uh, what do you think he's been doing to, to hit the ground running here so far? Chase Hayden, you said? Yeah. Yeah, Chase, uh, you know, obviously the only guy on the team I've recruited twice, right? So, um, you know, Chase is a very um, – I would say he's a, a, a consistent back. Um uh, has been a guy that, you know, has impressed me from uh, obviously back in the high school days, uh, plays with good pad level, understands it, sees where he's going. I really thought he'd be a good addition for us here, and he's kind of turned into that. Uh, I think the rotation of, of those three guys and also Jakari as well, and then 
have some incoming players that can bring de- added depth. But, you know, Chase is probably a very good early down and third down capabilities. He's got good hands. Didn't really see that part here tonight, but should be a valuable player for us in our offense as well as special teams. And then, you know, it seems like everyone who meets Donnie Navarro has nothing but nice things to say about him. Um, he got loose for a couple of big ones tonight. What have you seen from Donnie and, and what kind of person do you do you see him as? You know what, as a player, he's kind of very, uh, a very consistent guy, um, catches the ball extremely well. Uh, he and I had a conversation, I'd maybe after that first or second week, like, listen, you know, uh, to get where he needs to be and where he dreams of being, he needs to be a consistent uh, performer on the field for us, catches the ball. Uh, with his hands, um, I think he could literally play all three wide receiver positions. Uh, it'll be another good guy for us on special teams as well. But uh, the thing I think that the quarterbacks like out of working with Donnie is he's just a very consistent route runner, um, does a really good job at the top of the route, catches the ball, and then obviously today, you know, made some uh, at- athletic catches on the, on the sidelines as well. Thanks. Yep. All right. With the iPhone there with the hand raised, please identify yourself when you ask your question. Uh, you're on mute. There we go. This is Tyler Repke, Repke Media. All right, go ahead. Okay, uh, Coach, I would like to ask you, so, of course, Brandon Peters, uh, he really improved um, kind of in the practice, but not only in, not only him, but Chase Brown, um, running back as far as his quickness, you could definitely tell that. What would you say about how much he's improved and what are you looking forward to seeing him and Brandon work together? Uh, well, Brandon, you know, is obviously a guy that um, um, I think since we got here, he's kind of been uh, a, a blessing for us. He just, you know, he fits into the system, um, does a really good job of learning. Um, I think he's a guy that uh, has gotten more and more confidence with every practice. And then uh, Chase Brown is is kind of the same thing, but like you said, at a different position. He's a, uh, a very gifted athlete. He understands uh, how to run the football. You saw it today. I thought one of the more instinctive plays when he – reversed the field and got a nice big gain off of, uh, off the ball getting shut off. He's done a nice job of hitting the ball up inside what we've asked him to do. So um, I think those two working together behind an offensive line could be a, a tandem that's tough to deal with. Appreciate it, Coach. Good luck this season. Thank you. Hey, Matt Stevens and then uh, Gabby. Go ahead, Matt. Brett, with your odd man front that you debuted tonight, I, I would think the nose tackle is going to be really important. So what do you like out of Calvin Avery, a guy that was highly recruited but really hasn't had a chance to, to really put a whole lot of snaps together? Yeah, Calvin's, uh, you know, an impressive athlete. Um, uh, for a big guy, he's got to, you know, we got to continue to work with him. I'd like to, you know, take a little bit off him uh, just just uh, uh, weight-wise. But he's very strong um, and, and, you know, as a guy that uh, athletically uh, has, is light on his feet, does a lot of really – really good things naturally um, has bought into what we're asking him to do defensively up front, just playing with his hands, kind of pressing the line of scrimmage, knocking it back. But he's a, he's an, an explosive player. Um, I think it's, he has another good summer. Um, he had a, a eight week window with, with uh, coach tank, but this, this summer needs to be a big summer for him to get physically in a place where he can play more consistent football on, on more consistent snaps and, and be more productive for us. And lastly, I just wanted to get your perspective on what you'd like to get objectively out of these last two practices after a spring game like this. Is this review of the game that you just played, or, or do you treat it like a 14th and a 15th practice? Yeah, Matt, we'll, uh, we'll kind of combo platter on, on uh, Thursday. Uh, tomorrow they have the entire day off. It's a big day for us, class registration. Wednesday we'll come in and, and, and put the film to bed. Uh, we'll make some slight corrections and jump into a little bit on Thursday. Um, it's actually helmets only day by NCAA rules. i got to get one more practice where it's helmets only, so it's uh, not a lot of physicality to uh, Thursday's practice, a lot of uh, a little bit of install for uh, uh, for what we're going to do on Saturday, and then Saturday will be a full padded uh, uh, practice that we'll, we'll really um, kind of truly use as our last measure to teach guys some drills and some things that we'll be able to do during the break when we're not around them. So it's, it, it'll be good work days on both, both accounts. Thanks, Brett. Have a good one. Thank you. Okay, Gabby, you're up, and then Alec. Go ahead, Gabby. Hey, Brett, it seems like obviously having Chase Brown and Chase Hayden out there, you know, some of the veteran backs, but you also had Reggie Love um, kind of getting a lot of carries and he looked really good. I mean, what have you seen um, just from him as one of like the younger backs that you actually utilized out there today? The Reggie? Yeah. 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 Reggie uh, has been impressive to me. Um, you know, I, I, I saw a limited film on him and, and uh, was around him in the spring and uh, saw him work out. And I could realize just, you know, when you see running backs move, in non-football drills, you 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 want to 
you know, see three things, just, you know, how quick their feet are, how well they can accelerate and decelerate, and then how, how well they can kind of play um, laterally by going forward at the same time. It's, it's some unique movements that a running back does, and he really kind of displayed all of that during winter conditioning. And then when I saw him hit the field, he's a guy that uh, I, I felt for our, our system could really do some great things once he learns how to, to read uh, the certain reads that we're asking him to execute. So he's probably had the biggest jump. Um, you know, Chase Brown is a, 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 you know, got a lot of physical talent and, and, and played a lot last year. And Chase Hayden has played a lot in the places he's been. So Reggie had the biggest jump just playing foot, you know, football. And then I tell you, Jakari Norwood comes in. He's a nice change of pace back. He didn't get to show much tonight just because he couldn't get much going behind that blue offensive line. But uh, I think when you see him behind a better group up front, you'll see some production as well. And then we obviously didn't see much from Marquez Beeson tonight. Um, what have you just seen from him in terms of advancing in the wide receiver position? Yeah, Gabby, he actually just got back from injury. He'd been out, uh, I believe, the last 10 practices. So he he literally just got cleared uh, on Tuesday. I'm sorry, Saturday's practice um, to, to yeah, on some limited reps. So he he was just easing back into it. But I would say we're very pleased uh, with the early returns on that move to wide receiver. I know. Gio's excited to get his hands on him, and he's a guy that these last two practices will be big practices for him. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Okay, well, then we'll wrap up with uh, Alec. Go ahead, Alec. Coach, I kind of wanted to follow up with Joey's question along with the fans. You had the band here, and you had the dancers here as well, and the cheerleaders too. They weren't able to come last year either. How much does that just kind of add to the environment that you guys were able to put out here tonight? Yeah, I think that that's part of the feel, right? That's part of the deal. Um, I think the crowd uh, obviously reacted to him. I know I heard some interaction between that, but um, just to just the overall feel, right? To think you're at a, a college football game again, to, uh, even though the numbers were very limited, I think the crowd out there was great. And just uh, the vibe, and you also saw our players react to it. I think there was a buzz. I know they were talking about it uh, in the locker room. So, you know, just overall, very, very positive thing. Uh, we get to kick off the year with uh, Nebraska in week zero and, We'll still wait and see the logistics and details of that, but you know, to get get one of the major uh, uh, slotted times in, the, in that opening weekend to, to debut at Illinois football here at Memorial Stadium, right here in Champaign, uh, couldn't ask for anything better. You mentioned the players there and them reacting to the fans. I mean, it was clear on social media this week they seemed pretty excited to get the fans out here. Was that something you encouraged them to do and kind of communicate with them? And what was it like to kind of see that on social media between your players and some of the fans? We do. I think, you know, the great thing about coming here is I didn't know any of these guys walking in the room, but uh, have been around them now for, uh, you know, what, I guess about four months. And and just to realize the personalities we have, we encourage those guys. We don't want cookie cutters, right? I don't want a, uh, a bunch of the same guys doing the same thing. I want guys to express themselves, be around each other. Use We've had uh, media training with our guys. Uh, uh, Pat Pearson, a uh, 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 guy that, you know, that I brought with me from Oregon that uh, is really locked into that market and been in your guys' world for a long time in the media, uh, working with several different universities, but he's opened our eyes and I think opened the guys' eyes, especially to the NIL phase that could be coming our way, just about uh, he's constantly working with, you know, how to get guys uh, uh, better um, uh, handling their, their social media accounts to explain to them the good and the bad and and to really build their brand. And, and I think it's, it's catching on with our guys quite a bit. And uh, I couldn't be more pleased with the way our guys have handled themselves social media-wise as well as on the football field. 